You've only got one mama You've only got one pa You've only got one life After every five years, Kenya goes to elections to appoint various leaders. Following the promulgation of the new constitution in 2010, Kenya introduced a new devolved system of governance. The biggest contest of all elective posts is the presidency. The president shall promote and enhance the unity of the nation. The president shall promote respect for the diversity of the people and communities of Kenya. I therefore declare Uru Kenyatta the duly elected president of the Republic of Kenya. The declaration of Uru Kenyatta by the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission as the winner in the 2013 general elections was immediately challenged by the court leadership. They pointed to breakdowns in the Election Commission's computer system. I have no hesitation whatsoever in lawfully challenging the election outcome. To do otherwise would be a betrayal of the new constitution and therefore everything that Kenyans hold dear. The Supreme Court upheld Mr. Kenyatta's victory. It is the decision of the court that the said elections were indeed conducted in compliance with the constitution and the law. The narrow margins by which Mr. Kenyatta won and the perception that the victory only belonged to two communities spelled Kenyatta's first challenge, which he embraced from the very first day in office. We must remain united as Kenyans, and I underscore that this is not a matter of choice. For us to have a nation state which is functional, which is respected, which uh, abhors, which abhors uh, abuse of human rights, which uh, loves good governance. We must be able to work together as all Kenyans. The divisions in the political arena following the 2013 general elections were so tangible that during the inauguration of Mr. Kenyatta, a son of the founding president Jomo Kenyatta in Nairobi, the opposition leaders led by former Prime Minister Raila Odinga were far away in South Africa. We have actually ended to a kind of created monarchy, and that is based on community, not only family, but a community. To settle down to business, President Uru Kenyatta, along with his deputy, William Ruto, unveiled their cabinet. Adan is our nominee for cabinet secretary, industrialization and enterprise development. The laws require the president to appoint between 14 and 22 cabinet secretaries reflecting ethnic and regional diversity. If you look at the government of Kenya, it has 18 cabinet positions. I want to tell you, of the 18, the constitution is not represented because 12 out of 18 are managed by two communities. What is the left for the other 40 tribes, six. And now I can take you and tell you, look at the parastato institutions and measure one by one and read the names between. In Africa, it is normal that when the president comes in, he comes with his community, he comes with his friends, and most likely they're the ones who descend on the national resources, not necessarily the basic raw resources, but on the major contracts, on the major tenders. A few months into office, a terrorist attack at Nairobi's Westgate Mall shook the nation into the core. In a twinkle of an eye, a peaceful Saturday turned tragic. The attack left more than 67 people dead. The Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility, calling for the immediate withdrawal of Kenyan troops from Somalia. The politics were forgotten for a moment. We told Raila, the politics of who is who must stop now. It's about Kenya. So we want to see you with who standing and defending this country. He's told us, before you could mention it, that is what I was preparing to do. 
tribes were also forgotten as Kenyans stand in large numbers to show solidarity with each other. The blood banks were full. Kenya was one nation pulling together to overcome adversity. I feel the pain of every life we have lost and share your grief. The unity displayed by Jubilee and Code during the Westgate tragedy was short-lived. So thereafter, I think Uru advised us. They told him, no, no, no. You are the president of the Republic of Kenya. You are the person who should be responding to such issues. You don't need these people. These people, we are building them now. If Raila did not speak on this fora here at State House, the only thing he had is to make noise outside there. The code leader Raila Odinga left the country for a private trip to the United States, where he visited a number of institutions, including universities across different states, and met various leaders from various sectors. There was less activity in the political arena. In fact, some people claimed that the opposition was failing in discharging their functions. After three months away, his homecoming was a grand event and the security apparatus had to call off an earlier ban on the homecoming rally. As part of his welcome, Kenyans took to the social media to express their displeasure with various national issues. By the time of his return, Kenya had experienced a spate of terror attacks across the country and his return was met by questions from his supporters. As a way forward, the opposition called for national dialogue on a number of national issues, among them security, devolution, corruption and inclusion. We made an attempt through court leadership that is committed into safeguarding and protecting the lives of Kenyans with one message, Mr. President and your government, the opposition which commands the highest number of followers in this country is willing to sit down with you. President Uru Kenyatta welcomed calls for dialogue. The change of heart by the government saying that dialogue must be within the constitutional framework so the calls for dialogue transform into calls for a national referendum during the Sabasaba rally in Nairobi. The Sabasaba rally came after nationwide rallies by the opposition. On the night after one of the opposition's rally in the coastal town of Mombasa, gunmen attacked a village in Lamu killing more than 60 people. The Lamu attacks were linked to the question of land which has never been addressed since independence. The question of land was at the heart of the 2008 post-election violence, especially in the Rift Valley. The coming together of URP's William Ruto and TNA's Uru Kenyatta under the Jubilee Coalition has brought relative peace in the Rift Valley. Peace Minister Eva described the peace as cosmetic and hence the need for long-term solutions to address the land issue. Mambo ya mashamba lazima tutatue. Mashamba katika sio pwani. Sio pwani peke yake. Masha, mambo ya mashamba katika taifa letu la Kenya tumesema swala la mashamba lazima tupate jawabu kwa serikali ya Jubilee. President Uhuru Kenyatta blamed the Lama attacks on political networks despite the Al-Shabaab claiming responsibility. Lamu governor Isa Timami was arrested for murder charges following the attacks. The push for a national referendum now has dominated the political sphere with some of the 2013 presidential candidates joining the initiative. The county governors have also started their own initiative called Pesa Mashinani, calling for more funds to the counties. My brothers, why don't we first manage what we have properly? Us in the national government, you who are in charge of county governments, let us manage these resources first. Ndiyo tujue kama tunataka zingine au tunahaja na zingine. Lakini ukifikiria the answer to everything is to throw money. Where is this money going to come from? How can one in the middle of this charged political atmosphere bring unity to such a divided country? Education plays an important role in the social and economic development of any country. Kenya spends a large share of its annual budget in education. Millions of Kenyans spend about 12 years in the educational system. 
the infrastructure available by the Kenyan education system could play a significant role in fostering better inter-ethnic relations. Uh, because of where I went to school the time I did, I am able to identify very closely with people from the coast province. I had a few students who were Muslims. I went to school with members of the Luo community who are the largest. Uh, that is why I find myself very comfortable um, doing my politics or even business with members of the Luo community. With close to 50% of Kenyans living under the poverty line, a higher economic growth rate is needed to enable the economy increase job opportunities for the burgeoning youth population, who without employment opportunities can be a threat to the social and economic stability of the country. Equitable distribution of the national cake as the national resources from the national government are known is key in fostering unity. What we need to do to settle Kenyans and give them their national cake is the government to spread the national cake, national cake to the country, not to one corner, not one community, not to a group of people. In 2010, Kenya adopted a new constitution which introduced a devolved governance structure in the form of counties. While many see devolution as the answer to equitable development, measures must be put in place to ensure that it serves to unite the country. The president and the government must be able to create enough opportunities for Kenyans everywhere, such that if somebody in Wajia knows they have the same set of opportunities as somebody in Kakameka, and somebody in Nyeri, same quality of healthcare, same quality of education, same access to you know roads and infrastructure, then ethnicity will stop you know being a factor. If the poverty continues, uh, the corruption continues, the misuse of public funds continues, uh, the public keeps hearing stories about how we have our members of the county assemblies who are flying out to Singapore, to Dubai, to South Africa to go and do nothing basically, where state resources are being used. At some point, the public is going to say will not accept it. My Excellency Margaret Kenyatta. Having acknowledged that fostering national unity is one of the top priorities of his administration, President Uhuru Kenyatta's commitment towards bringing Kenyans together will be among the standards used to judge his presidency. It is a cancer that has been with the country for 50 years. The Jubilee year is a time of freedom and celebration where everyone receives back their original property and slaves return home to their families. Elected in the Jubilee year and on a Jubilee coalition ticket, the big question remains, will President Uru Kenyatta free the country from the chains of tribalism?